All right, good morning, you guys. Happy Wednesday. I have a couple of announcements uh, about a couple things. Uh, one thing is about the exams. All right, you guys requested that I give less problems. So you do realize when there's less problems on an exam, the percentage is gonna be more strict. Like for example, if I only gave you four problems, that means that each problem is 25 points. So if you miss one of the four problems, that dropped your grade down to a 75%. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you want less problems, you're gonna have to get the problems right to not damage the percentage. Okay, so just to make you aware of that. The other thing is when I post grades on Zangle, give me a little time to make sure that I input them correctly. So leave me a couple days, because what's happening is I'll input grades on Zangle and people are sending me a message right away like, you made this mistake, you made that mistake. I find my mistakes because I double check myself, but I don't always look right away. You know, you need to give me some time because I have a lot of work to do. And so just give me a couple days to find my own error, um, which I will because I do double check the grades. And, um, you know, in a few days, if I don't find it, then you can let me know. This morning, all of the teachers were in a meeting to look at student forum comments on distance learning. For example, what's happening with students at home? Pros and cons. What's happening with students with the teachers with distance learning? So I found it to be very beneficial <laughs> because obviously I like to hear student comments because I always know that I can improve you know, my teaching, and I do want to do that. A lot of times students think that I'm working against you. I'm on your, you know, I want to be the best for you. And remember that I'm not from the Psychic Friends Network, so I can't read your mind. Half the time I can't even see you because you're not showing me your video. So you've got to, you have to speak to me. You have to say, Ms. Birch, you know, I feel like you're going too fast. Ms. Birch, I think you're giving us too much work. Ms. Birch, I think this so that I can enhance what I'm doing. Now, I do know that I am cognizant of the number of problems that I give you. I am cognizant of the number of problems that I give you on exam. I think a lot of common students were making that the teachers are giving too much work. Well, for me, I am watching the number of problems that I give you. I, but I'll tell you what I think one of the issues is. I'm only teaching three days a week, and I normally teach five days a week. And so I think that part of the problem, I'm not saying this is the problem, I'm saying part of the problem is you're having trouble time managing. Because I don't know if you're work, doing your math every day for an hour, and you have to, because the number of problems I'm assigning, I'm... I'm assigning them according to you working every day for an hour, okay? So I think it has to do with time management. And um, yeah, I, I, I want students to talk with me more. Like for example, I was looking at some YouTube videos of my lessons the last few days and I found out that you're not seeing me in a full screen. So, the videos, anybody who's been absent, you're, you're seeing me in a little thumbnail. So I called WebEx and I said, I, I don't want to be seen in a thumbnail. Those kids have to see me as large as possible in the recordings. And so right now we're testing this to see if we're going to get the video. See, I never had problems with the videos before. All of a sudden, you know, the, the videos are these little thumbnails. So and nobody said anything to me. You know, um, so that means that either you're not watching the videos or you don't care or, you know, if you're absent. So you have to talk to me um, for order for things to be the best they can be. You have to let me know, hey, Miss Birch, your videos are little thumbnails. We can't even see them. What's the point of making a, you know, a recording? 
So anyhow, please talk to me about whatever is going on. Um, during class may not be the time, but you can always send me a reminder. You can always send me an email. You can always set up a meeting with me um, to let me know if something is not going good or if something could be done better. Okay. Okay. So we're going to have an exam on Friday morning clock on P6. I want to take questions on P6 right now. All right. Anybody want to ask me any questions about P6? Yeah, I have questions about the complex fractions. So you won't have a problem. Okay. You're reading them so far. So this is already, there's nothing we can do with it. He's just going to float along. On the top, however, when you subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. So you would get x divided by 3 minus 3 over 3. You what? It's going to be the common denominator and x minus 3 on the top. Now, so that's right. So now we're going to take the step. So is it this x minus 3 over 3 divided by x minus 3 over 1? Can we change it to multiply now? Reciprocal? Cross cancel. These are ones. So one times one is one. Three times one is three. And that is your final answer. The excluded value, if they ask for it, would be x. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to work this over and over again or work problems in the globe online, like problems like this, until you feel comfortable. So you want to be able to sit down at the... Because those of you who keep saying, I can't, I can't, it's too hard, I can't, you won't. So what you want to do is you want to practice them until you have confidence in knowing that, yeah, I can do that. I study this. I worked a bunch of these. I know how to do this. I can do it. Okay, any questions about any of these steps? Um, how many complex, question, complex fractions will be on the exam? Okay. There are one, two, three, four, there's five sections. So I'm going to give between 15 and 20 problems. So that means you're going to have two to three problems in each section. So with the complex fraction, knowing that I'm not going to give you the hardest problems in the world, you're going to have, you're probably not going to have three. You're probably going to have two. You might only have one. But you could have two. Right? If there's five sections and I put two problems from each section, that's only 10 problems. So that means some of the sections are going to have three problems. 
It's probably not this section. All right, what else would you like me to do? Last call. Anybody want me to do anything in P6? Can you do number 39? Okay, x squared plus 3x over, I would not do this problem. And you're subtracting. Well, when you're subtracting, don't you have to have a common denominator? You do. So your common denominator is x squared plus x minus 12. Let me show you where more than 50% of my students is gonna, they're gonna make a mistake. It's right here is they're gonna to fail to distribute a negative one. So did you hear what I said? Most of my students are gonna mess this up. So what you get in the numerator is you get x squared plus three x and a negative times a positive is a negative x squared and a negative times a negative is a positive and that's where the error is gonna be. My students, the majority are gonna write minus. and you'll get the problem wrong. So remember when you're multiplying a negative times a positive is a negative, this is not automatically negative. This is a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's where the first mistake is. You cancel those and you get three X plus 12 divided by X squared plus X minus 12. And then people are gonna circle the answer. That's not the answer. Don't you see you can do a GCF? Doesn't this look like factoring method five? Shouldn't we factor to see if we can simplify? Yes, and if you don't, you're gonna get it wrong. So this is a GCF. So when you take out a three, build a cake, Three times the quantity, x plus four. Isn't that factory method five? Can't you find what multiplies to give negative 12 and adds to give one? And isn't that four and three? Where the four is positive and the three is negative to multiply to get negative 12 and add to give one x? Do you see what happened here? So your answer is three divided by X minus three. So be careful. Don't forget to distribute and don't forget to see if you can factor to simplify at the end. You always have to simplify. Hey, can you unmute yourself and tell me you're not going to make these mistakes? You're going to do this? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make those mistakes. Okay, good. Can you unmute yourself and tell me you're, you're, you're going to distribute? You're going to distribute that negative? I'm going to distribute the negative. Who else is going to distribute the negative? Who else is out there? I'll distribute the negative. Good. Who else? So only three people are going to get it right? I'll distribute the negative. Good, good. Anybody else? All right, any questions about this problem?
All right, go on then. Other questions? Can you work on question 40, Ms. Birch? Yeah, 40? Yeah. Um, you should know how to do this. Okay, we do have a common denominator. And remember that factoring doesn't get you anywhere. Unless you're looking for a common denominator, factoring doesn't get us anywhere right now. So you don't wanna do a GCF. You don't wanna factor unless you're looking for a common denominator. We're not, we have a common denominator, x squared minus x minus six. And remember what I said, make sure you put simple binomials in parentheses so you don't fail to distribute all right, so go ahead and mute yourself. Tell me what I should write. X squared. Go ahead, I'm listening. X squared. Minus 4X. Minus, minus X plus 6. That's right. So, you get X squared. A negative and a negative is a negative and you add plus six. Look at that. This whole thing almost canceled. You cannot cancel the X squareds and the sixes though. If this was a negative five X, you could have canceled the whole thing to one. It's not though. So you have to factor. So these look like factory method six. What multiplies to give six and adds to give negative five X, wouldn't that be an X minus six times X plus one? Nope, that's not gonna work. Would it be X minus three minus two? Yeah. So that multiplies to give six and adds to give negative five. And on the bottom, it's gonna be three and two also. But this time, three's gonna be negative and the two's gonna be positive. So you look at this and you go, does anything cancel? Does anything cancel? Yeah, these cancel. So your final answer is X minus two divided by X. And if they ask for the excluded values, this is, yeah, you're gonna factor this down here. You cannot have a three and you cannot have a negative two. But once again, you wanna, don't fail to distribute and don't fail to factor at the end to simplify. All right, tomorrow will be the last day you can ask me questions about this. Um, take a look at page 106. All right. What I started the other day is solving. And we looked at solving linear equations. We looked at solving rational equations by eliminating the fraction. We solved Martian math, where you had formulas solving for a certain variable, 
and we looked at solving absolute value. Would anyone like me to do another absolute value solving or anything else? So we've done all the way up through one, one through 54 on page 106. Does anybody want me to solve an absolute value problem? Yeah, can you do Okay, let me make up my own first. Take a look at this one. Now, one of the things that's difficult about this class is you have to remit, not only do you have to work the problem, you have to remember all the methods. So you have to remember with absolute value that you have to isolate the absolute value and write a disjunction. So on this one, to isolate the absolute value, when you subtract seven, you get the absolute value of X plus five, negative five. So can absolute value, that can only be a zero or a positive. Is absolute value ever gonna give a negative? No. So the answer is no solutions. And we're not doing any work. We're not writing a disjunction. Now you can't make that statement up here, but once you isolate the absolute it equals the negative, it's never gonna happen. Never. Let's do problem number 48. I don't think I worked that yesterday. Okay, here we go. The first thing you do is you isolate the absolute value. So we're going to divide by three. Once we isolate it, we're going to write a disjunction. So we're going to write an or. And we're going to have the positive case without the bars equals seven and the negative case without the bars is also equal. So you solve this, so you're going to add one. So two X equals eight X equals four. Over here, I'm not going to distribute the negative. I'm going to multiply by a negative one to get rid of it. And I'm going to multiply by a negative one to get that. So in essence, the little trick is to just keep the two X minus one and negate the right side. So we're going to add one. So two X equals negative six and divide by two X is equal to negative three. So remember that the absolute value is a V and it is crossing the X axis at negative three and four. So left three zero and right four zero are the solutions. Those are the roots. Those are the X intercepts. They're also called zeros and they're called answers and solutions. Bunch of names for them. Okay, anybody else want me to work another one? Okay. Well, what we're gonna get into right now, the last five sections is solving quadratics by these various methods. So, you can solve a quadratic five different ways. You can solve a quadratic by graphing. You can solve a quadratic by factoring. You can solve a quadratic by square roots, completing the square and the quadratic formula. So what I did is I made a table of these five solving methods 
and I put them in the Algebra 2 class, but I'm going to put it in your class. It's not there yet. So I just wanted to show you uh, the Algebra 2 tech class, what, what I wrote. And here it, oh, let me share my, shoot, hold on. Sorry, hold on a second. I got to share my screen. Let me share my screen with you. Okay, can you guys see that? So, yeah, when you solve, when you solve by graphing, it's tedious. Everybody hates graphing. It always works, but what if, what if it doesn't cross the x-axis in a good place? What if it crosses at one and seven eighths? There's no way you're gonna be able to give that answer unless you're using a graphing calculator. So there's disadvantages to graphing. It's tedious, it's not exact. Um, so I hardly ever use graphing to solve unless I have a graphing calculator. Okay, the next method is solving a quadratic by factoring. This is awesome because sometimes you can do it in two steps, but it doesn't work for every problem. Like every problem isn't perfect. So not every problem factors. The next great method is solving using square roots. Well, it's also a great method, but it doesn't work if you have an X. X squared plus X equals five doesn't work. To use square root method, you have to have only an X squared. And then the last two methods, they always work, but they, they're time consuming. Like completing the square is not always easy. And solving by the quadratic formula could cause you nine steps. There was a custodian at, at the high school one time that said, you know, Roxanne, I don't know why the teachers teach all these methods. Why don't they just teach the quadratic formula? The quadratic formula works for imaginaries. It works for everything. And I told him, I said, the quadratic formula does work, but do you want every single problem to be nine steps? Like, wouldn't you rather solve it in two steps? Wouldn't you rather solve it in three steps? So anyhow, I just wanted to show you this, and I'm gonna put this in uh, the materials section in Google Classroom, um, but these are the quadratic solving methods. All right. So take a look at problem number 55. Okay, this says solve by factoring. So it says solve a quadratic by factoring. So let's do problem 56. Well, a minute ago. We can't see him as. A minute ago. When I told you to solve absolute value, Andre, can you use that? When we were solving absolute value, I said to isolate the absolute value and write a disjunction. We're not doing that with this. So now, we want to set the problem equal to zero and put it in standard form, which is descending powers according to x, x squared, x, x to the zero. And then we're gonna wanna and use the zero product property to solve. So you have to remember all this. You know, what do I do when I'm solving absolute value? What am I doing when I'm solving radicals? What do I do when I'm solving quadratics? 
So look at it is set equal to zero. It is in standard form. So we can factor. Now, remember there's no equal sign on the left. The equal sign, one equal sign is in the middle. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial or factory method six. Actually, I take it back. That, that is not, it doesn't work to be a perfect square trinomial. So using fa factory method four, perfect square trinomial or factory method five. What multiplies to give 36 and adds to give 13? Four and nine, and they're both negative. Right? Hello? Right. So watch this. The zero product property, the zero product property says that in order to get a zero, one of these quantities is zero or they're both zero. So take a look at this. You see this quantity right here? What does X have to be to make it a zero? A zero. Okay, zero minus four. Zero minus four is negative four. So zero is not it. Positive four. Yeah. Right. What does X have to be to make that a zero? Positive nine. Right. So that's where your quadratic is crossing the X axis. Your quadratic is crossing the X axis at right four zero and right nine zero. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set it equal to zero. We're gonna write it in standard form in descending order. We're gonna factor using one of the seven factoring methods and we're gonna use the zero product property to solve it. Let's do another one. Let's do 58. X squared equals negative 11 X minus 10. Okay, we have to set it equal to zero, which it's not. 11x we're going to add 10 and put it in standard form so we set it equal to zero it's in standard form and now we're going to factor what multiplies to give 10 and adds to give 11 that's factory method five Come on, we spent a lot of time factoring. What multiplies to give 10 and adds to give 11, hurry up. 10 and one. 10 and one. All right, and now we're gonna use the zero product property to solve this, to find out where is the quadratic crossing the x-axis. So what makes this zero? Negative 10. Good. What makes that zero? Negative one. Now, what if your factors are more difficult than that? So what I want to do right now, I want to do a couple problems that are already factored. You just have to give the solutions using the zero product property. And we're not even going to do a quadratic. We're going to do a cubic. Now, this is already factored. Um, the reason why I know this is a cubic is because if I multiplied all this out, it is x cubed. And we're looking for three solutions. It's already factored. We're going to use the zero product property. What does this have to be to make a zero? A zero? Yep. Now, guess. What do you think this is? Now, 
What I'm asking is five times what minus three gives a zero. So we're just gonna guess. So you have to eliminate the five on the bottom and put a three on the top. So it's gonna be three fifths. Now, you figure that out. What you're gonna have to do is off to the side of your paper, you're gonna take five X minus three and set it equal to zero and solve it. So hopefully you can get good at this and not have to do this, but um, let's, let's try another one. What does this have to be to make a zero? It has to be negative, right? Negative what? Doesn't a two have to go on the bottom and a one on the top? Yes. Isn't two times negative one half negative one plus one is zero? Yes. Let's try another one. So let's do a quartic. So a quartic looks like a W and it could cross the X axis four times. Missing one, let's put it to there. So I know this is a quartic because I have an X squared, an X and an X, that's X to the fourth. So what makes this zero? One, two, three, four, five, zero, negative one. Hello. What makes this a zero? Is it two oh seven? For that one, not this one. Oh, so you're right. one. yeah, this one here. It's two zeros. Right? Is it one third times zero zero? Yes, no. Is it one third times zero squared zero? Yes. Okay, so this is gonna be two sevens, like you said, because the sevens are gonna cancel and two minus two is zero. And what's the last one gonna be? Negative what? Five over three. Yep. And if you don't know how to do that, you can take three X plus five and set it equal to zero off the side. Subtract five, three X equals negative five. Divide both sides by three, X is equal to negative five thirds. But you can look at this and go, you have to cancel the three. It has to be negative and five, negative five plus five is zero. Now, just one thing, you're gonna only list the zero once because you can reuse elements in a set. So there are two zeros. So there's a multiplicity of zero, which means this guy touches and turns on the X axis, but you only have to list it once in a solution set. So if this was X cubed, you would have zero, zero, zero. So. Wait, so based on the exponent, that's how many zeros there are? Yeah, uh-huh. So if you had, let's say three X to the four times X plus one, that would be a quintic. So the zeros would, I mean, the answers would be zero, 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 negative one. So there's five solutions, but the zero is repeated four times. Learning a lot of things.
I'll do one more. Yeah, it helps when you understand math, when you understand what's going on. You know, rather than just going through steps that you're going to forget the next day. So right now, the most important thing to know is we're finding out where the quadratic is crossing the x-axis, and those are the solutions. So let's do one more factoring problem. Let's do um, number 60. Three x squared. Okay, look at this. First of all, you do not want to ever divide by a variable. If you divide by the variable, you're going to lose a solution. But look what I can do. I can divide both by three to simplify. Now I'm going to set it equal to zero. And now I'm going to factor. Well, isn't this a GCF? So using the zero product property, what does this have to be to get a zero? Zero. Zero. What does this have to be to get a zero? Four. So this quadratic is crossing the x-axis at zero, zero, and right four, zero. Now we don't know how deep this parabola is, but we do know it's crossing the x-axis at zero, zero, and write four, zero. Okay, so what I've just taught you is how to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. And this is the easiest method. Okay, so class is over in a couple minutes, so I'm going to let you go early. Um, make sure that you've started this assignment. Um, you're not just studying for five days for this exam. I'm not allowing that type of time. Uh, you should already be started on this. You should be able to do all the problems from 1 to 60 at this point, and I expect you to be going on this, okay? So, um, and make sure you're working problems as I teach it. You're not waiting till the night before to turn in, you know, an assignment. That's not a good way to roll. I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta do the problems as I teach them. So that's the most effective way that you're going to be successful in this class by is by doing that. Okay. All right. So anybody want to ask me about anything before we take off? All right, then you can hang out with me if you want. I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, I will see you next time. All right, all right, have a good day.